through that challenge. We've just caught me programming in a, a code and we've arrived located in quite a lovely area of space. Got my old ship on autopilot, as you can probably tell. And yeah, I'm going to be delving in and looking into a few sorts of theories that I have on where the entry point to the void or the realm of glass may be inside of No Man's Sky, whether it gets put in to fruition inside the view of us. If that sounds like your sort of thing and your cup of tea, stay locked in, stay tuned. So chums, there's quite a few different entry points that I theorise could become the entry points to the void and right now my ship is flying us on autopilot over towards the space station. Now we've seen the trailer for the new space stations that should be coming into iteration within side of this year. The new space stations have got engines on the rear of them. They've also had the actual core of the station upgraded. So the actual core of the station inside of here, let's just um, let's just put this into old camera mode. You're going to have me whizzing through the air in a second, but here we go. If I go into camera mode right now and just bring me over here a little bit, if I just put myself off the centre, this behind me right here, this is the station core. Now the station core at the moment, you can put in a station override and it does nothing. I'm wondering whether inside of the new iteration of No Man's Sky, once you override the station core, whether the station itself, with the engines on the back, pump into life and boom, and it warps the whole station into an alternate realm, almost like a mirror universe of where we are right now. So if we did it inside of this sort of system, when you go over to the Discoveries page, it's going to have exactly the same planets. However, some of these planets may become like infested planets or may become like the dissonant planets with all the crystals all over them, meaning that they've got variants of the realm of glass and also the void, which is all the sort of organic stuff happening on each of the different planets. But not only that, rendering some of these planets might even become previous builds like the vanilla build or the E3 build. We might get to see those majestic diplos. We might get to see all the wavy davy sort of wormy liney terrains that we saw in yesteryear inside of previous builds appearing again with inside the verse that's kind of one way that i think they could implement the realm of glass and the void into iteration people anyways what other ways can i think of we'll get on to that Okay, chums, I'm on the actual galactic map now something that hello games have done in recent update is made it so you can see black holes really easy on the galactic map now, black holes before, we used to use them to traverse the universe to get to the centre a little bit quicker. But now they don't really have any rhyme or reason. Now, when you actually fly towards the black hole, something rather curious happens now. If I just take myself off of the screen for a moment, so you can't see me. One second. There we go. And there we go. Oh, there we are. I'm off. You can see my ship has gone all sort of blurry and it done some sort of dual image. They have spent quite a lot of time in making that sort of blurred effect appear around your ship as you fly inside the black hole. Why would they bother doing that if they weren't going to revamp the black holes and their use? And why would they make them easier to see on the galactic map? Could it be that when you go for a black hole, it's got the chance to drop you into the realm of glass? Or into the realm, or, or into the void itself, people. You know, that's a, that's an oh, I like this nebula. This nebula looks freaking lush, doesn't it? So that's another sort of odd theory I've got. Perhaps it's going to be, be through a black holes that we enter into the sort of realm of glass or the void, people. Also, another thing is our void ships. So we actually got a void egg that we had to hatch. It could be that maybe the void ships are going to give us a way to get back into the actual void. There you go, I'll sh show you my living ship anyway, just in case you're not sure what I'm on about. Okay, Jums, when I'm sitting inside my living ship, you can see there I've called it the Red Devil. It's a little bit different inside of here, all organic and messy, I guess. So this was actually hatched using a void egg. Now, you would assume that a void egg comes from the void. Anyway, so here we go, let's go into the old camera mode. And this is my actual void ship behind me right now, as you can see there. It's quite an unusual looking thing. It looks a little bit like one of those lamps that you get inside of freaking Ikea, doesn't it? Um, I'm not a massive fan of these living ships. And there's a reason why I'm not a massive fan of these living ships. It's because the actual technologies you get for them, although that it's supposedly an alien ship, they're, 
There's no alien weapons inside of these, which is a little bit mental. It's a little bit cat, to be fair. I'm not too sure why it's showing them as overloaded. Oh, I've got too many technologies, perhaps, inside of here. I need to fix my living ship. But I don't see the point, because I never use it. Because you can't get the equivalent of missiles for it. You can... It's got, basically, phase beams and photon cannons. That's it, when it comes to weapons. You can't get the equivalent of a positron ejector. I would love to see some sort of alien weaponry put into this thing. Like, maybe little boogers that stick to the shields and sort of dissolve them or stuff. Or to even have a perk to jump you into the void. Maybe they haven't put all these sort of living modules in here and organic weaponry for this thing because you're not going to get them until you go into the void. Maybe we got these super freaking early. But yeah, that's my living ship. Anyway, I'm going to be swapping back to my other ship and telling you of other theories that I've got. Okay, Jams, well, my next theory, if you go up and you speak to these little chappies on board of your freighter and you have a little word with them, one of the options you've got is engage the singularity engine. You see it right there, the second option down. That basically fires up a black hole that you jump through, and it's called the singularity engine. That sounds like something straight out of Event Horizon. And Event Horizon takes you into the realm of chaos inside of the movie. They go into the chaos realm and all chaos breaks loose. So I'm wondering whether black holes might be the entry point, as well as engaging your singularity drive, which also spins up a black hole. So meaning that your freight has become the entry point in a roundabout way and get inside of the void. That would make a heck of a lot of sense, wouldn't it? That makes a lot of sense as why they've added black holes to the galactic map too. I think black holes, for me, is probably the most plausible idea of how we enter into the void or into the realm of glass. And it might be that we just enter into one that way. We might just go into the realm of glass or the void. I'm, I'm thinking more the void. Well, chums, another way that I think we might enter into the void is through these boundary failures. Now, you find these on some of the exotic sort of planets uh, where you find the exotic trophies. Let me just go into camera mode again, and let's just put the sun in the old sky, and let's just offset this slightly. So you can see this thing behind me. It's freaking massive. Now, you get some of the latter law inside of here that really does break the fourth wall. If you haven't come to visit these or seen my law videos on these, it's well worth a look. But these are big enough to fly your ship through. And they're called boundary failures. So perhaps these are going to take you from our universe into another one across boundaries, almost like how the portals do, but ha actually maybe sandwiched in between the simulation into the area where the Sentinels spawn from. These do have a Sentinelized sort of look about them. I think these might be more likely the entry point into the realm of glass, whereas black holes might be the entry point into the void is what I'm thinking. And I'm wondering whether the stations, if you did hit those up with a station override, has the opportunity to take to evil or is what I'm wondering. A bit of randomness there from the old stations. So all of these I'm putting on the table as being plausible ways of jumping into the void or to the realm of glass. But where is the realm of glass and the void? Where could Hello Games actually actualize the void or the realm of glass? Now, I did mention earlier about sort of like systems themselves becoming more infested or becoming more dissonant. Now we have seen dissonant planets appearing inside of the verse. I don't believe we've got one inside of this system. But yeah, you find them from the galactic map when you're looking for sort of areas in space that haven't got water on them. And these planets have got the purple shards of glass sticking out with sentinels amalgamated on them so it's almost like they have popped through from the realm of glass and brought some sentinels with them jarred on spikes and i think that's where the void mother may reside alongside all of the echoes it's a bit weird she's called the void mother though if she does reside in the realm of glass but i'm hoping that the arg in part four makes sense of that so where else could they actually put this in situ because it's like the planets that we see with the infested ones and also the, the glass sharded ones, the dissonant planets, they almost feel like it's pockets of the void or the um, realm of glass having sort of like void creep or glass creep into our own universe. But it must be coming from an origin point. So where could that origin point reside? If we are to do raids or go into this physical realm or evil realm, how could Hello Games actualize it inside of game using a system or perhaps a galaxy that has been ring fenced? I think you know where I'm going with this, people. Okay, chums, I'm up at the portal terminus inside of the spatial anomaly. And I have a base here that's in the Udalatai galaxy. This is galaxy 256 or 255 on how you count your galaxies, because you can count Euclid as being galaxy zero 
and this is 255. Or you can count Euclid as being galaxy 1, and this is 256. There's 256 galaxies inside of the game, no matter how you count it. But you can see here the Oodalatai galaxy right behind me right there, and I can walk to it right now. You can only get to this galaxy if you've got a friend that's already got a base there that sends you an invite, or if you're lucky to see it in the portal directory inside the space anomaly while there's a lot of players present. And then you can get to this galaxy. Otherwise, this has been ring-fenced and been ring-fenced for some time. Now I'm wondering whether Hello Games have done that on purpose, because they can do whatever they want with this final galaxy. I mean, during Origins, Sean Murray said that they've got a nice problem, and that nice problem is the players own the universe. Well, if Hello Games was to just ring fence off one galaxy, 256, the end point, and make it their own galaxy, hopefully players would go from Euclid and try and get all the way up to galaxy 256 if it's got something a little bit special there. And if galaxy 256 becomes the realm of glass, perhaps they could just reset this galaxy. I know that would sort of like, you know, decimate all bases that are here, or maybe they could just go with bases that have only got a certain pipe part count or threshold to make it a little bit more you know sort of workable in that sort of regard but galaxy 256 is quite an interesting sort of galaxy in the way that it's been ring fenced and the fact that you can't just warp here from like galaxy the previous one to oodle when you go for it now it would just takes you back to either hilbert i believe or euclid now something weird has been happening since like 2023 um before, when you used to loop back round, it used to put you in Hilbert, or if you do it through a save editor and you go to the galaxy after this, it would actually show you an overlay of Udalatai. But now in the top galaxy map, for some reason, it shows Euclid as the actual destination when you use the save editor. Uh, Ghostlight's done a video on this, Professor Cynical's done a video on this, they've both done deep dives. This oddity is happening with the whole Euclid glitch, as we should call it, from the actual galactic map, and that's been happening in 2023, roughly when this ARG arc first sort of came about and has been bringing in this narrative. Now, my wonder is whether Galaxy 256 has been ring-fenced to become more of the void and the realm of glass and to bring in more of these sort of biomes. And we've got a taster, I think, with the infested planets and also the dissonant planets, but I think they're going to step it up a bit if they do bring in the vo vo realm of glass or the void into iteration. So that's all the ways that I think that we could enter into the void or the realm of glass, all the ones that I think are feasible, and I'm going by my gut feeling on the ones that I feel are most likely to happen. And I think it could be a medley of all of these sort of mashed into one. What do you guys think inside the viewer? Sound off in the comments. Let us know what you think is the most plausible amongst all of these. And yes, if you have got time, go and hit up Ghostlight's video or even Professor Cynical's video where they've done deep dives into whether Galaxy 257 is a thing. Now, I haven't really touched on whether I think Galaxy 257 is a thing. Galaxy 257, prior to Euclid, um, uh, sorry, prior to um, Next, when you could done Udalatai, Galaxy 256 or 255, however you count it, after you jumped, it would loop you back into Udalatai, Galaxy 256 or 255, but it would put that you was in this new system, Udalarismal, and that would be like Galaxy 257. But it was only a label, it was just namesake. As soon as you got to the centre of the galaxy again, you started seeing all the bases you saw when you was inside of Udalatai, including your own bases and also systems discovered by you. That's when the penny dropped that you hadn't actually gone anywhere. This was before Hello Games put in the loop to take you back to Euclid or Hilbert, or whatever it's Hilbert that it usually drops you into, Galaxy 1, if you're not counting Galaxy, well, Euclid as Galaxy 0. It's all very confusing. You know, Hello Games could have made this a lot freaking easier with the way they labelled stuff and named stuff and numbered things, but, you know, it's because it's all got to tie into hexadecimal code and the fact that zeros and ones are very much a thing, zero is definitely an integer. So that's why Euclid is Galaxy Zero. If you know a lot about hex hexadecimal code and how this universe has been generated, you would know that there's not more than 256 galaxies because that's how the game has been programmed, that's how it's been seeded, and that's how they spawn all of the actual things into iteration and that's why all of our galaxies look fairly similar apart from there's a little bit of a tweak to the algorithm through 10 galaxies but then even those 10 algorithms get repeated over and over and over and over again but anyway people that's that's a whole nother video going into how the actual universe is actually governed and how it's geared and the hexadecimal code 
and it's a little bit boring to be frank. To be fair, anyway, hopefully you found this video interesting. And uh, that, that's pretty much everything I've got for you, I believe, people inside the Viewerverse. So yeah, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you like what I'm doing here, then please do. Please hit all those buttons. And if you've already done that, why not pick this video up and share it with friends, especially if you know someone's picked this up when it was three across all platforms, because I do beginner's guides. In fact, I'm doing a whole new fresh playthrough of No Man's Sky, and I'm kicking off from after Omega ended. So I run the Omega expedition, and I'm seeing what it's like to then pick up the missions. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of confusion there because you get so many missions stacked. Watch my playlist if you're a new player, and if you have a difficulty following the uh, tutorial after Omega, because I have to admit, it wasn't a walk in the park, even for a veteran like me. Until next time, people, salute to Mondo, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.